Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I don't know how to start this episode off, but I, I'm just kind of looking forward to it. So, I bought something and I'm trying for the very first time. Something that I think a lot of people have uh, had experience with. Um, it's called microwave popcorn. <laughs> like bag popcorn <laughs> now you might be wondering how have you never had popcorn before and the answer is i have had popcorn i've never bought the type where you will microwave it yourself um because i thought what's the point of all that work when you can just buy it already popped but like a few weeks ago or something like that i think like um just hanging out in discord with the visno kids and chris and ash were talking about making popcorn and i was like you know I thought, I realized that I'd never done that myself. So I went to a Rite Aid and I saw that they sold like a small, like mini bags of them, like this mini bag. It's like a half of a bag, I think. Um, for like a dollar, like three packs. So I was like, let me give it a shot. It looks like a lot of them popped. I can't tell if there's any kernels down there. So I hope I did an okay job. Let's go again, give it a shot and see what fresh popcorn is like. Tastes like popcorn. I don't know what I was expecting. They have cooled down just a smidgen. Not a lot, it's still warm the bag. But before when I took it out, it was pretty hot. I do love that the directions, the directions don't really tell you when they're done. You're supposed to like, be like, paying attention to it yourself. Cause it says, right there, watch and listen. I have to fucking, I have to babysit the microwave and listen to the popping of the sound to see when it stops. I mean, it tastes like fine. I'll probably use more like butter or seasoning or something. I'm the type of bitch that likes likes their things flavored to shit. And this is like as basic as it can be with like a with butter. This has butter, but I need more. Literally when I popped it, I was like, how can I add more butter to this without actually like just putting a, a bar of butter in it? <laughs> I don't have anything like that. All right. So what you didn't see was me scarfing down a lot more popcorn. Um, but we're ready. Uh, so we last left off. We're in trial now. Okay. So as a recap from last time, um, we was last time when it happened. Was last time when it went down. Uh, the kidnapping of Maya and the investigating of the murder behind Juan Corita and all that stuff. Oh, one second. What that popped out. Um, before anyone asks, this has no significant meaning to it. It's just something I wear all the time. But uh, we we're investigating the murder of Juan Corita. Talk to on guards manager Adrian Andrews. Is that her name? And we found out about her mentor, Edworth. Edworth. Our boy is back. And. Other stuff happened, but I think that's the main thing. We're in trial now. I'm actually like a little nervous because I don't remember how the trial goes, or at least I don't remember how. Yeah, I don't remember how the trial goes. I guess. All right. Right. Voice acting. What was his voice? I made him to be sort of like a Nagito type of voice. I don't know how effective that is, but it did it. Hajime. <laughs> It's, it's also hard because I'm wearing my large headphones and I can't hear myself that well. So voices are probably going to sound off. There's no specific reason why I'm wearing these. I just am. Uh, Hajime. Adrian did it? That's what it looks like. Why does it look like the text got bigger? I'm sure it actually, I'm sure it didn't. But for some reason to me, the text looks bigger. Maybe it's because I was spending so much time. I was like, um, I spent so much time editing where the screen is like significantly smaller that it looks more big. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Dude, no way. That woman couldn't do anything like that. In court today, there'll be a mountain of evidence that will implicate you. A mountain of evidence? I'm certain there's someone out there trying very hard to pin this whole thing on you. Please, Mr. Lawyer. Dude, like I said yesterday. I'm refreshing like a spring breeze, all right? I can't let any sort of scandal ruin that. 
I understand. Who's this? Is this Edgeworth? Well, it's almost time. That's not Edgeworth. Mia. I forgot about her. Mia. We must get a complete acquittal today. I know. But I can't focus on Maya's situation right now. Or Pearl's either. No matter what, I have to focus on winning this case by the end of the day. Indeed. Well, let's get going. <gasps> it's him! This is right! Good morning. This is it. What? Sorry. Let me try that again. Now that I'm putting a fucking voice effect over it, I want to make sure I'm getting this right. Good morning. This is it, Mr. Attorney. The day of the trial. Maya, she's unharmed, right? Well, when I checked on her earlier this morning, she seemed a bit, how shall we say, tired. <gasps> don't worry. People don't die that easily. Besides, what you really should be concentrating on is winning today's trial. <laughs> For my sake, as well as yours, you must win today's trial. Which is why I sent you a little present this morning. <gasps> oh, I didn't realize that happened. So sudden, I didn't realize that happened so quick. Present? What in the world would you want to give me? You'll figure it out once the trial starts. And even if you don't like my gift, I expect you to graciously accept it and win the day's contest. If you please. Wait! It makes sense, but I didn't realize that it happened so quickly. The kidnapper sent me a present? Mr. Lawyer Dude? Who was that? Uh, uh, no one. It has nothing to do with you, so forget you heard anything. Dude, did your nose just get longer? Or were you just happy to see me? Terrible. Now in session for the trial of Matt Ongar. Are the prosecution and defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. I said, Mr. Wright, what happened to Miss Von Karma? Uh, I don't know, Your Honor. Why are you getting mad at me? Your Honor. Please be quiet, Bailiff. Court is in session. If you must tell me something, please keep it brief. Now then, what is it? Prosecutor. Prosecutor Von Karma has... This morning, Ms. Von Karma was shot by an unknown gunman. What? J shot? No. Somehow, I think this is the present that man was talking about. His present? Ms. Von Karma is one of the top prosecutors of the country of the moment. If she were to disappear, it would be your... It would be to your advantage. This, this is totally insane! Miss Von Karma, is she alright? I don't have that answer! I wasn't asking you. She's alive and in stable condition. Oh, that's good! Phew! Oh, you, you're. I thought he'd show up. For some reason, I had a. Uh, uh, I, I thought we were listening to Back to the Future music. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? What is this music? I forgot. I forgot that's how it starts. Your Honor, due to the circumstances, Miss Francisca von Karma cannot appear in court today. I, Miles Edgeworth, will be taking your place. It's a good thing you fed me all that info before you did that. <laughs> the prosecution is ready, naturally. <laughs> it's good to see you, my boy. Miss von Karma was shot in her right shoulder and is currently undergoing surgery. Luckily, I have looked this case over and am familiar with the details. The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Matt on guard. The, the court acknowledges the prosecution! Right. I finally found the answer I was struggling for on my long journey this past year. And by the time this case comes to an end, you too will know the answer. Now then, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to the witness stand. Am I doing his voice right at all? Not right as in the one that suits him, but one that I've usually done for him. I can't hear it. Witness, your what? Witness, your name and occupation. 
Hey, pal. My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm a detective down at the precinct. For now. For now? After the trial's over, I'm supposed to turn in my badge, sir. No! Can't do it! What, what, what good is a precinct without Detective Gumshoe? D detective Gumshoe? The prosecution has no need for a depressed witness. Lift your head up and face forward like a proud officer, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Yes, sir. Now, let's have your testimony. And if we want to explore the various facets of this case, we must start with that. Get ready, Phoenix. This is gonna be one very fight. What? Well, what? This is gonna be one very rough fight. Yeah, it would have to be with Edward as my opponent. The answer he was struggling for. Interesting. Show me this answer you finally found, Edward. Mm-hmm. The murder happened after the Hero of Heroes watch ceremony, sir. The victim, Juan Corita, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe it was definitely murdered, sir. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Hmm. After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room. Yes, sir. Both the victim and defendant were alone in their room, sir. I see. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross examination. Okay. We're just gonna do press. Would you please give us a brief timeline of what happened after the ceremony? Okay, bro. The ceremony started at 6 p.m. It ended around 8 p.m. And that's the, that, then there was a short break. A special post-ceremony show was supposed to start in the lobby 30 minutes later. And that's when the victim's body was found, correct? Which is to say, the murder occurred during the 30-minute break period. <clears throat> Please continue with your testimony, detective! The victim... Pop, 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 pop. The person who discovered the victim's body was Adrian Andrews, correct? Yeah. Who is this Adrian Andrews you're talking about? She's the defendant, Matt Ongard's manager. She's a really pretty lady, <laughs> sir. <laughs> oh, so she's a pretty lady. I wonder if she will grace us with her presence. When the post ceremony show was about to start, she went to get Mr. Ongard. After visiting his room, she ne next went to the victim's room to get him for the show, sir. I see. And that's when she found the victim's body. <laughs> The cause of death. Wasn't that because Mr. Corito was stabbed in the chest? Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Take a good hard look at the crime photo. Now, a real pro attention would be drawn here to this bandana. Mmm, banana! Um, his bandana, sir. That's a thing wrapped tightly around his neck, sir. Ah, oh, yes, yes. I see. It's bananas of the banana. <laughs> it's bananas of the bandana. Then, what about the knife? It seems to have been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. Hmm. We have a crafty murderer on our hands here. Bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bip. And why did you think that? Oh, something about the guitar case, whatever. Because it was empty, pal. The German Ninja doesn't go anywhere without his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere at the scene of the crime. Oh! Then how about this theory? A fan really wanted the guitar into the crime to get it! How's that? Uh, we thought that too, but... But? The only fingerprints on the guitar kits were the victims. Only the victims, huh? Hmm, I see. Ah, so much for my theory then. We were. Oh, bah, 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 bah. We later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. What convinced you that had nothing to do with the case? The guitar wasn't at the Gaywater Hotel that night. Well then, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Juan Corita, had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. So you mean he forgot to put the guitar inside the case? 
Yes, sir. Even when he was out on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. A fucking moron. So that guitar case was empty even before he got to the hotel. Yeah, that's right. So I really had nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm. I believe that that's enough. First, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. And then, after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with the knife. But why? He's already dead, right? Hmm. <clears throat> Which brings me to my next point. Why then did the police arrest Mel on guard? Because there was reason enough to suspect him. Here it comes. Looks like Edward's back in full swing. Very well. Detective Gumshoe, please testify about this matter. Yes, sir. Matt Ongard and Juan Corrida were huge rivals with each other. They each thought the other guy was in his way. That's more than enough in my book. As for evidence, there's the Jammin' Ninja's button. It was ripped off the ninja costume and was found on Mr. Ongard's Hakama. The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. The defendant brought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Hmm. <clears throat> So the defendant's fingerprints were found on the knife used in the stabbing. It was sort of sticky on the handle, so the fingerprints came out of it pretty cleanly, sir. Mm. And there's this button. That was found on the defendant's clothes, was it? Mm. And is this button also covered in blood? Yeah, and we know that the blood's on the victim. What? And we know that the blood on it is the victim's blood, sir. What? Okay. Oh, this points very clearly to the defendant, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, Your Honor. Ready to give in yet, right? <laughs> I'll find a hole in your argument somehow. You can press it as hard as you like. Just hurry up with your useless, pointless questions. Arr. We got this, we got this, we got this. Do we got this? I don't even know what we're... Matt on guard, blah blah. He said we could press as much as we like. I'm going to do that. But in terms of popularity, Mr. Ongard won, did he not? Yeah, uh, but you know what's ironic, pal? Juan Corrida was always one step behind Mr. Ongard and everything. This year it seemed like he'd finally caught up, ready for the big final showdown. But Mr. Corrida lost the Grand Prix in the end. That is too bad! He must have been pretty downhearted after losing! He thought the other guy was in his way. That's more of enough in my book. Wait just one second here. Mr. Ongar was beating Mr. Corita in the popularity polls. Well, yeah, I guess, but... Which means that in the defendant's eye, the victim was not a rival at all. Which means he had no motive to kill at all. Hmm. <laughs> yes, I quite agree. Okay. Uh, sorry if you see that occasionally the, the, that the lighting on the camera changes here and there. Uh, today is a pretty cloudy day, so I'm just like having to manually adjust the brightness and whatnot. So deal with it. Well, detective! Um, it's not. How do you do this with? Hey, pal. Well, it's not. Well, I guess if you put it that way, then yeah, the defendant would have had no motive. Detective, I'm beginning to see why you were fired. Hey! No, no, no! Not you too, Mr. Edward, sir! That's... I look forward to your pension negotiations. No, no, no! <laughs> now, not Detective! Let's continue with the testimony! No, not my poor pension, too. Leave the poor guy alone. Detective, if you value your money, I suggest you proceed. Uh, yes, sir. We can talk about my pension later, sir. Uh, what about what I was saying? Hello? Anyone? It's okay, it wasn't important. As for evidence, there's a gnaw button. Do you have any proof that the button belongs to the victim? Huh? What do you mean, pal? Oh, uh, let me put it this way. I'm asking if you have any evidence to back up your claim that... This button was ripped off the Jammin' Ninja's costume. Ah, huh? but can't you tell just by looking at it? 
And the victim's blood is on it! Anyone could have smeared that blood on there afterward. But Mr. Edward, help me, sir! All right, I knew it would have to be this piece of evidence. Now to reel this one in. Mm, thread. Huh? <laughs> the button was attached to the costume by the thread, obviously. And that, that, that thread snapped when the button was torn off. If you match up the ends of the thread on the costume with the thread on the button, it's a perfect match. No one's fucking going through the trouble of doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Fuck you. They're a perfect match, bro. Egg. And that's Edward for you. Never misses a beat. <laughs> they were dropped off the near your classroom and was found in Mr. Agar and Takamai. When was this button found? Very soon after the body was found, we rounded up everyone who knew Mr. Corrida. And then we did a search on the mall. That's when we found the button. Hmm. So it was almost immediately after the murder. And the police didn't have the free time to lollygag and play tricks, unlike some people. Hey, what is he trying to say about me here? I don't know. Well, <laughs> I don't lollygag. The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. How were the fingerprints arranged on the knife? Huh? What do you mean, pal? By examining the fingerprint, you can determine how the defendant held the knife. For example, did he hold it normally or overhand? Oh! Is that what you meant? Well, we didn't actually think of that. <laughs> I can't believe the bumbling of this department. Mm, hopeless. Were you paying attention to the testimony, right? The defendant's fingerprints were all over the knife. There is no way to determine how the knife was held at the moment of the murder. What? Why would it? Why would his fingerprints be all over the knife, including the blade part? Who? Why would fingerprints be on the blade part all over the knife? Hmm. So the defendant, the order of the knife, then? The defendant brought the knife to the crime, which makes it the premeditated but the murder. There is no way this was a premeditated murder, even if he brought the knife. Sorry, pal. This isn't some pocket knife. It doesn't fold, so it's not great for walking around with either. Well, when you're wearing pants as long as Hakama's and they're like loose flowing, you can easily tuck it into a pocket. Ah, well, this is not good. If the prosecution can prove it was a premeditated murder, we're done for. Phoenix. <clears throat> oh god. <laughs> Sorry. Yes? There's something very interesting about what the detective said just now. Think carefully before it's too late. A button covered in the victim's blood? and a knife with on, with on guard's fingerprints. Be grateful. If the judge were more rash, he would have already pounded his gavel in closing. We're still in a world of trouble. Well, before any battle, you must find your enemy's weakness. So let's find the weakness in this testimony, no matter how small it may be. Okay, Phoenix? Okay. Mm, I think it's supposed to be this sentence, but I don't know what, what makes it a not- what makes it a not premeditated murder. even like get stuck on his pants anyway what did he kick him like did he kick him or like knee him or something and it just popped off what makes this a pre what makes this not a premeditated murder like how do what what evidence do we have to make it so that that's not the case um strangled with scarf and stabbed with knife but no. I don't know the answer to this. Oops. Oops. Oh, fuck. What is the answer to this? Uh, oh, but... A button ripped off, found it, now guard Takuma, defend his fingerprints all over the knife. Is it the fact that his fingerprints were on the knife? Is that what it is? Wait a second. What? What? So the basis of your argument that this was a premeditated murder is simply that my client bought a knife beforehand? That's right, pal. The defendant did not buy this knife. 
Uh huh? Well, it's after the fact that it says Gatewater Hotel on it. Take a good look at the handle of the knife, you and you'll see what I'm talking about. I was wondering why it was meant, why it was mentioned in the the court record. Huh? It says the Gatewater Seal set into the handle. Gatewater. I think I've heard that name somewhere before. That's the name of the hotel, the Gatewater Hotel. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Well, now I'm too, now I'm too bright. <laughs> the sun's not even fucking out. God damn it! This is so frustrating to deal with. Uh, oh, having a webcam was was such a mistake. <laughs> I need to fucking adjust the light constantly. Uh, did I read this line? I don't remember. The murder knife was actually property of the hotel, which means this murder was not premeditated. Yes, that is very true. That is very big. <laughs> What is it, Mr. Edward? Mm, I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? Mm, I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. How so? Mm, I admit this knife is hotel property. There is no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough to not realize this. But I didn't know. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I almost called him Edra, that meant gumshoe. And the question is Where did the knife come from? Why is that obvious? It came from the victim, Mr. Corina's room! I'm sorry, Your Honor, but that is incorrect. The victim ate a last meal before he was murdered, and with that being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. He left his little- he left peas on the table. I see this little peas on the plate. You're picky bastard. Eat your fucking vegetables. There's a knife and a fork on the table! Then... Where in the world did this knife come from? If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Matt Ungard. Ongar didn't eat his peas either! You fucking boys, eat your damn peas! Especially what was on top of this table. Adrian ate her peas! <laughs> there was something missing. Perhaps, is it a single knife? We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. M Matt Ongar's knife was missing. Eric. Mr. Ongar had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Why would he carry a knife to a visit? To kill, of course. And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven. This was a premeditated murder. Why would he not- If you bring a knife to a fight and you kill a person, why would you not wipe the fingerprints off? It don't make sense. Absolute- What? Absolute- What? <laughs> Amazing, Mr. Edward! Absolutely brilliant! A brilliantly clear deduction! It seems like Edward had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps, and I just walked headlong into it. A murder weapon with fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. There's quite a sizable amount of evidence here. And I can safely say that any further deliberation is a waste of the honest time. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not yet shown? He means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Hmm? Uh, well... Phoenix, the judge is favoring the prosecution right now. If we answer with something wrong here... That gavel of his will be ringing out the sound of our defeat! Mr. Wright, do you have something more important? What? Do you have something important or necessary to present to this court? Uh... Oh, we're back at the top for saves. Well, okay, um, 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 the, um, something, something, something here, maybe, Cr crime scene, maybe, the fact that the guitar case lid was open in that scene, there's one. 
One piece of evidence that catches my attention. Something that the court has yet to see. That's all right. I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to be continued at all. However, I am giving you one chance. And only one. Whoops. And what the judge is saying, right, is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. If I mess this up, it's curtains for all of us. You may now present one, and only one piece of evidence. Ah! Ah! Now then, what is the important evidence that you must show to the court? Something that hasn't been shown yet? I mean, this technically hasn't been shown, but does this have anything to do with the case? Ah! Ah! I don't want to get a game over, I'm scared. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I'll be fine. I want to talk about the guitar case, but I don't know if that, we've technically shown that to the court, right? Yes, it's a white box, is it not? Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. Okay, was that the right answer? Uh, that's a really precarious glass. The base of it is so small. Like, the, where it sits on the table, it should be wider so that it has a proper support. The scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against his assailant. The vase is broken, his makeup is all over the floor. Those were all things that were at one point, sitting on top of the dresser. Hmm. Well, yes, I see your point. However, this glass that's sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that had not fallen over with everything else in this is wine glass. What is this wine glass? This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration. Well, uh, what do you all have to say? Oh, uh, well, yes, it is a little peculiar. Uh, yeah, isn't it? I, I thought it was. <laughs> You can stop looking at me with those puppy doll eyes of yours now. Mr. Edward. What is it, Your Honor? Your opinion. You don't need... What? You don't need my opinion. Because there is no special meaning to that glass. What? <laughs> it's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. By the person who discovered the body, Adrian Andrews, for example. She could have easily been so shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Hmm, that that's all very plausible, Mr. Wright. Can Miss Andrews really have set that glass down without thinking? So, found next to the victim, it's filled with tomato juice. No sign has been drank. I was gonna wonder if it. Oh, whoops! It's possible that's what happened. There's nothing that points Miss Andrews. Blah, blah, and if I raise an objection here and make it, blah, blah. you can't think like that, Phoenix. Mia. Yeah. Right now, you're hanging by a very thin thread. I, 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 I picked the wrong thing! Oops! <laughs> Anything else you can grab onto right now is better than nothing. So in other words, push as far as we can go. That was my bad! My B! I didn't- I chose the wrong answer. The defense would like to cha challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see something that proves it was Miss Andrews who set the cup on the table. Hmm. <clears throat> You've turned the situation on its head yet again, as usual. Mr. Edward, do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just bluffing. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never say anything unless I have the evidence to support it. Wh what? You're not thinking hard enough today, right? I got a lot on my mind, bro. Did you think that the wine glass escaped my notice? Th th then. I like. I also. You know what I love? I love that no one's questioned where Maya is, considering that she's always been with like Nick and stuff. Instead of you have the tall boobied lady, like where she come from? You guys are not curious about that? And of course, it has been thoroughly inspected for fingerprints. F fingerprints? There were only one set of fingerprints left on this wine glass. Only one? Well, whose were they? And they were not the victims nor the defendants. Rather, they were one. They're of one, Adrian Andrews. What? Well, that's where my answer was, I guess. I was looking to see if there was a fingerprint thing about it, but I guess they decided to wait until later to show it. And that is why I said the person who had discovered the body had left it there. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? No, Grr, I can't believe I fell into another trap! Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Corrida. 
Look at that, she's so shocked. She's like, oh no. <laughs> but upon seeing his dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. I thought in the original, I can't remember. I thought in the original game, she was more like a, not like, I thought there was some sort of like bend to her eyebrows, but maybe not. <clears throat> what you just said made a lot of sense. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Now do you see right? You can't change any part of my scenario as it explains everything all too well. Grr. I've thought long and hard this past year about what it meant to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I will show you the answers I've come to discover. Well, wait a second, Mr. Edward! I think the prosecution has provided enough evidence for me to enter my verdict! Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. The prosecution has yet another witness we would like to hear from. But what we would like the court to hear from. Another witness? Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. What in the world is Mr. Edward thinking? 